So again, this is a team event, if most of you didn't know. Uh, they're two-man teams. And on the cheat sheet, you're going to be able to see that I have a column that's called team and a number that goes with them. So you can see who are paired up together that way. Or you can go to DraftKings and see who are paired up there. Now, the format of this tournament is, I believe, first day. They kind of change it. it. It goes from one to another every single year. But you're going to have an alternate shot and you're going to have a best ball. Those are the two formats that each golfer is going to, uh, to, to play before the cut. And then after the cut, they're going to do the same thing. And it's going to just be in, in the same order. So if they start Thursday, I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they start Thursday with best ball and then Friday with alternate shot. But it could change. Maybe it's alternate shot Thursday, best ball Friday. And remember what best ball is. Both golfers play their own golf ball throughout the hole. Whoever has the lowest score is what the team takes. So if Patrick, Cantley, and Xander Shoffley are playing, well, they are playing together, but they tee off on hole one. Patrick makes a bogey, so he gets a five on hole one. I actually, I forget what the first hole is. Par four, yeah. So let's say he gets a five on hole one, and Xander gets a four. The team takes a four. And likewise, if someone were to get a birdie and someone gets a par, you take the birdie. That's how best ball is. It isn't scramble. People think, people always say best ball and scramble are the same thing. They're not. Um, so it will be best ball. And then alternate shot. The way that they do alternate shot is each golfer in the team, of course, there are only two golfers. They will pick a hole that they tee off on. Or they'll take odds or evens, basically. So using Patrick Cantley and Xander Shoffley as our example, one of them is going to get odd number holes that they're going to tee off on, and the other guy is going to get even number holes that they're going to tee off on. And they're going to continue that all the way through. On each hole, though, they have to alternate their shots. So if Xander decides he's going to take the odd number holes, he's going to tee off on hole one. And then Patrick Cantley is going to follow, and they're going to continue to do that until the ball is in the hole. Let's say Xander was the one that teed off, or let's say, yeah, Xander's the one that teed off on hole one, but Patrick Cantley was the last person to put the ball in the hole. That doesn't really make sense, but he's the golfer that made, that put the ball in the hole. So if you, if you were to think about it, Xander tees off, Patrick Cantley hits it on the green, Xander puts it but misses, and Cantley goes, taps it in. You don't alternate to Xander teeing off again because you also alternate the tee, the tee shots. So Cantley would then tee off on hole two. Technically, he'd be hitting two shots in a row, but it doesn't work that way when it comes to alternate shot. You alternate tee boxes, and then you just alternate your shots through. Just think of them as like... I, I, I guess I can't think of the, word, like the words that I'd want to use, but you keep alternating per hole until the ball's in the hole, but then you also have your designated holes you're teeing off on so once a hole is done it doesn't matter who put the ball in last you go to the next person that's supposed to tee off so i hope that didn't really conf i hope it wasn't very confusing for you but that is how the format works um i, I explain that and i'm kind of a, a a critic when it comes to these these people explaining things uh on these dfs videos because what does it matter to you? <laughs> like, what, what does it matter that they're doing alternate shots and best ball and all that stuff? It's kind of like a, almost like a brag in a way. Like, oh, I know, I know this information. I'll tell you this right now. I only say that to you to inform you, but it really doesn't matter when it comes to picking your players. Because no one's going to have data as to how well someone does an alternate shot. No one's going to have data as to how well someone does with best ball. And if there is data... Or if there, yeah, if there is data, it's going to be so touchy, basically. I don't know the word I'm looking for, but it's going to have, it's going to be very sparse. You're not going to have a lot of data on it, and it's kind of just negligible. So I, it doesn't really matter. It, I just want to inform you that that's what it, that's what's happening this week. But then I also am a critic myself that I'm like, what difference does it make? It doesn't really make any difference. Just remember it's a team event. That's the, that's the most important thing. It's a team event. Um, let's move on. So 
that's the tournament information. One last piece to add to that is strength of fields 326. It's not terrible, but we have 80 teams. Uh, I currently have 79 that came through on DraftKings. I don't know if they're missing two golfers or if two golfers withdrew and they're just not filling it in. Um, if there are the two groups, they end up showing up in DraftKings after this video post. I will put them on the cheat sheet and we'll talk about them, but I imagine they're going to be in the 6K range. We have very similar numbers in the 6K range as we did last, actually in every salary range that we did last year. So I imagine that it's going to be the same. That is your tournament information. I don't even know if we really have to talk about the golf course. I would say this though, if there was a little bit of an advantage, it looks like golfers who hit a draw have a bit of a, an advantage here. And it's kind of really interesting because if we look at kind of the last few winners of this tournament, well, like Patrick Cantley and Xander, they both hit draws. That's their preferred shot shape. They can shape it both directions, but they prefer draws. Leishman fades the ball. Cam Smith was hitting a draw. Rom fades the ball. Palmer fades the ball, but used to hit a draw. Horschel hits a draw. Scott Piercy hits a fade. So... I guess I could go through all the top 10s and just show you like, hey, this golfer hits a draw, hits a fade. But what I noticed looking at a lot of the golfers inside the top 10, hitting a draw, there are more golfers that hit a draw in these top 10s than there are fades. Now, that's not an end-all be-all. Don't get it twisted. I'm not trying to convince you to play golfers that hit draws or fades. Um, I think if you wanted to make a tiebreaker, I probably would prefer a golfer who hits a draw over a fade. But I'm really not consciously making that decision. I'll tell you right now, I already like Xander and Patrick Cantley this week. I think that that goes without saying. I think most people are going to pick um, Cantley and Xander as their golfers. They're anchoring their lineups around. I, it just, there's more to talk about with those two. I'll, I'll save that for later. But the fact that they hit a draw doesn't really matter all that much. But if I was choosing between Patrick and Xander versus Homa and Morikawa, or not even them, maybe it's Sungjae and Keith Mitchell, I'm going to choose, like if they're tied, I'm going to use the fact that Cantlay and Shoffley hit draws as a tiebreaker. It's going to be one of my tiebreakers. So that's kind of why I include that in this whole information piece. Just giving you a heads up as to what I notice to be kind of the preferred shot shape at some of these holes. It isn't a necessary shot shape, so it isn't, you know, they need to have that shot shape. I think for scoring possibilities, it is the best shot shape to use. Um, but, you know, look at John Rahm winning the Masters. Everyone will tell you you want to hit a draw at the Masters. He predominantly hits a fade. Although, you got to see his ball control. He, he did hit draws when he needed to. So I think that also applies here. If you're, if you're a shot maker, this is a good golf course for you. Um, and I actually provide all that information in the cheat sheet. You can see that here in column P. For most of the golfers, I have their shot shapes. I kind of was been a little lazy. I haven't filled in the rest of these guys. Um, if there is a golfer you're kind of interested in as to what shot shape to hit, like Taylor Montgomery, for instance, I know it's a fade. So if you are interested in that information, like for some of these other golfers, I'll provide it because I'm pretty sure I know most of these guys. I just have to get in here and, and make the updates or at least in my, my input sheet that I use. So that really covers the uh, tournament and golf course information.